Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and we are back again with the Lunar Lander script. This is the script where we're going to do a suborbital hop from one location to another. Uh, let me just go ahead and switch camera views and jump right into it. So in my previous flight, which for this particular update was my only flight, I went from that location to that location, covering 3,335 and a half kilometers, and I had a DV efficiency of 79.33%. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to repeat that flight. So with my options here, I'm going to go to retry last flight. And what I want to do is at the end of this video, I want to show you guys how you can uh, basically import this flight and you can try the exact flight that I'm doing right here, uh, just kind of for fun, see if you can beat my score. And hopefully I'll improve on that here. So I'm going to uh, instantly bring the sun to my location. And that puts the information over there. So I'm going to switch my camera views to the other side or switch my webcam to the other side. And I'm going to go to the 2D panel because I like it a little bit better for this task. And I'm going to scroll the 2D panel all the way up. That is going to block this part of my webcam is going to block this information over here, but there's nothing there that we really need to care about. But uh, yeah, I thought that uh, it'd be a bit fun. You know, I can post, uh, I can tell you guys how to import this flight and you can fly it as many times as you like and post your results in the comments down below. And even better, if you can record a video uh, and then post your video link in the comments down below. Now that uh, text file is plain text, so you can easily just go in and type in any numbers you want and say, yeah, I beat you by a landslide. But uh, we're on the honor system here. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna power up this side. And what I've been doing is I like to go to burn time calculator and I like to put in about 40 dV. It depends how far off I am. And I just use the hover engines to kind of throw my Delta glider up off the launch pad so that I can then rotate and head out. And before I do that though, I do wanna make sure I keep the retro doors open just in case. I need to quickly back off a burn or something. Hopefully, hopefully I don't need to do that because that's inefficient. I'm, I'm going to switch the hover hold over to vertical uh, speed. And I think that's kind of all the setup I need to do. So let me, uh, let me get underway. So I'm just going to burn and rotate. So, and then immediately start rotating. All right, so we're going for 134.13. And I'm going to probably back off a little bit here, a bit more here. And boy, I got that just about on, right about there. Full power on the main. Now I'm gonna pitch up a little bit. I don't really know how much, so I'm going to immediately look at one of my camera views outside, my front camera. And it doesn't look like I have anything in front of me to worry about, like I don't have any um, sides of a crater or a mountain immediately in front of me, so I'm not going to pitch up really steep. I do want to get some altitude, but, you know, not a whole ton. Okay, now I'm going to say I'm probably climbing more than enough at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and more or less level out. Now I need to turn my attention to uh, this part over here because once that green line starts growing, it grows really fast and it's super easy to overshoot your target. So what I like to do is when it gets, you know, about three quarters of the way over, I cancel the main engine and then I just baby that last little bit. So we're probably about, probably about a quarter, half, three quarter cancel. See, it just grows really fast. Now using a couple taps of main engine, I'm just going to dial in that last little bit. Now, I don't know exactly where those lines are at, so I'm going to uh, move the map over this way a little bit and then down. Try to get that as centered as I can so I can just zoom in all the way on that location. And a bit more and a bit more. That way I can, you know, see my target really well. And I can see, you know, I'm pretty much there, but I am um, too far to the north. So, uh, but I think I'll worry about that later. Um, I'm going to give myself just a tap, just another, one more tap of main engine though. And that 
I should have used translation. That was... I used control thrust, and that just really takes off on you. So, okay. Now, before I reorient my vessel at all, I just want to see what Pursuit MFD says my alignment is with that target. I'm going to use its target relative program, press the target button, and conveniently enough, the name of the target is target. Okay, so right now, Pursuit MFD is saying that I am missing the target by 2.3 kilometers, and it is, it's continuing to go up. So with that information, I'm pretty much facing uh, exactly prograde right now. And I know that I'm going more or less east, you know, mostly east. And since my, since map MFD is showing that my line is missing it to the north, that tells me that I need to push my vessel a little bit to the south. And I can probably do that right now very cheaply. So... In fact, I can probably not even change the orientation of the vessel. I can probably just use translation thrusters. So I think I'm going to do that. With a little bit of 3, which will push my vessel to the right, which is more or less south. I think I can correct my or I can correct my alignment with, uh, with just a bit of translation. And I have rotation on. Because I'm a moron. Let's see if we can get back to that center position. Pretty much right there. And yeah, with just a little bit of translation, catching it this early helps me save DV. Now, I am 3,000 kilometers away, so I don't necessarily need to have the, the line directly over the target because it is going to continue to change a little bit as I go forward. I'm just not sure in which direction. I should be able to figure that out though, right? Mm, no. I don't know how to figure it out. But I think it might actually be the case that I want to I want it to be a bit below the target cuz I feel like it's correcting up. But let me yeah, in fact I think I just saw it move. Let me look at pursuit MFD for a moment. And keeping in mind that I've messed around now with the orientation of my vessel so let me try to get as close to center line again as possible say that's pretty close so currently it says i'm three kilometers off and it's getting worse one other thing i can do let me go into the prograde position uh, let me get closer to the prograde position a bit of time warp just to help out the autopilot so I'm not spending so much fuel on on autopilot cost. So that's got us pretty close to prograde, so prograde autopilot shouldn't have much work to do. Now when I'm in the prograde position, my X and Y switch uh, positions. So I'm gonna give this a moment to settle down, and once it gets you know mostly locked in, I'll be able to tell you know what's happening with that position, which is now my Y. So it's still settling, so I'm just going to give it a moment. A little bit of time work to speed that up. All right, it seems like it's pretty well locked in now. So I'm 5.7 kilometers off, but it's getting better. Okay, so... So that tells me I might actually want to... So, it, so currently my line is here, and it's getting better. So I guess it's probably tracking to the south. That's my guess. All right, so for now, let's have Pursuit MFD up. And I'm just going to warp time forward until I'm at 2,000 kilometers, and then we'll check in with our information again, see how we're doing. About right here. About right here. And I'm going to use the Prograde Autopilot again just to get this locked in. So it has improved a little bit. Let's check Map MFD one more time. And yeah, it does tend to be, it looks like it's tracking to the south. Alright, so let's go back to Pursuit MFD, turn off the autopilot, let's go to a thousand kilometers. And here we are, about a thousand kilometers. Turn the autopilot back on, just to get it locked in position, a little bit of time warp. 
to let it settle. And now, now we're about two and a half kilometers off. So I think I don't think it's going to be perfect by the time we get there because it looks like it's only correcting by. Um, I didn't really pay that much attention to what the numbers were, but I feel like we're still going to be at least a kilometer or more off by the time we get there. So what I might want to do, turn the autopilot off, go back to translation, and I feel like I need to slow or I need to speed up how fast this is coming down. I think I can do that by using linear translation and pushing the vessel uh, down. And I think I got that backwards. Okay. I think I was thinking right, but I just, just needed to go in the other direction. So I'm using a bit of translation to push the vessel up so I can speed up how fast that number's coming down. And I don't really know how to make sure I'm going to be bang on, but I want I just want it to be as close as it can be. So I'm going to go forward to 500 kilometers, kind of see how things are. And that'll be my last opportunity to make any decisions. Because after 500 kilometers, it's time to get in the retrograde position and get ready for our braking burn. So about right here, come back to real time. So, okay, I feel like it's going to be pretty close. Um, it's really hard to get that exact, but I feel like we're going to be pretty close. So let's go retrograde. A little bit of time warp to speed that up. All right, come out of time warp, and now I'm going to turn off retrograde, and I'm going to go uh, level horizon. And now I want to know, uh, according to burn time calculator, when do I, at what distance do I need to begin my burn? So we're currently moving along at 1640, we'll call it. And we are coming down a little bit, so I think some of that velocity... No, that's my ground speed, so I'm, I'm assuming that's how fast I'm moving across the ground, and I'm hoping that doesn't take into account my vertical. Rotation. So I'm going to go to rota rotation and get lined up with that center point. And according to burn time calculator, we need 89.27 kilometers if we're using the hover engines, which we're not. So we're going to switch all the way over to the main engines. We need 51 kilometers. And this number counts down really fast. So I need to stay on top of that. So we're at 12 kilometers. We're falling at 55 meters a second. So that's something else we need to pay attention to. I'm going to switch my camera to... Uh, this one is good for now. This is back down, which is facing backwards, which for us, since we're rotated backwards, is actually forwards. So it's backwards and it's tilted down slightly, which is different than the uh, back cam. Back cam is just completely backwards, uh, parallel with the vessel. Back down is backwards and then tilted a bit to the ground so we can see a bit more in front of us. All right, now all attention needs to go on to making sure we do not miss this burn. And let's go ahead and put in our newest number and we're not going to change it after this point so we're going to go 1646 so we need 51.2 kilometers all right we're not going to pay attention to anything else until it's time to do that burn okay coming up on the burn in just 180 kilometers probably about a minute of real time this can get a little disorienting because you think you're going to hit the mountain or something, but this is more in the actual direction you're going, so let's have that up for now. All right, paying attention to how I'm aligned with the center point. Actually, I, I understand, so I'm, I'm not going to have that other camera up because I do want to be able to see the landing site if I happen to notice it. I mean, we're not going to see it yet because we're really far away. So we are lined up. And we're at nine kilometers. All right, so getting ready to do this burn very soon. Ninety-seven. 
and we need 51. We'll probably start it when we see 52 because we have sped up just a tiny bit. All right, 80, 79, so coming up really soon. That's 70. All right, getting ready to do the burn right now. All right, now we really need to pay attention to our altitude. So at various points, I'm going to have to use the hold to zero it out so that we don't fall too soon. And we're getting closer and closer to the landing site. Twenty kilometers out. Say about a hundred, maybe we'll zero out our fall. Let me go ahead and go to the down camera now. And the the landing spot is really small, so it's hard to see it, but Hopefully we'll notice it. So we're about 100 on our vertical descent. Let me get a bit lower though. Okay, we're about two and a half kilometers out. I'm gonna go ahead and zero out my, my fall speed. Okay, so I think, uh, there it is, I see it. All right, nice. And we stopped perfectly. So I'm going to get rid of my hover so we can start dropping. Now we just need to translate over a bit to the left. And a bit. Well, let me get moving to the left first. And then I'll worry about. Let me zero that out. I'm going to have to zoom out because now I can't see it anymore. And we need to translate a bit to the left. All right, I'm gonna turn this off so we're not burning through our fuel. Keep just a little bit of hover in there. And it looks like we're still moving just a little bit towards the site, but may wanna speed that up a little bit. So that was a pretty decent target that time. Weren't too far off. Okay, so I think I might actually need to rotate the vessel because using translations is going to take too long. And let me go ahead and hover hold. Let me zoom out one drop there. And yeah, let me go ahead and change my rotation. It's not actually the direction I wanted to go. So I'm going to let it go all the way around because I want the landing site to be in, in the, at the top of the camera so that forward is forward and left is left and all that kind of stuff. Makes it a little bit less confusing. And let me turn that off and just let ourselves drop a little bit. Getting ready to kill rotate. And right about there. Although it looks like we have some movements in here. Translation. So let's translate like that. Let's move a little bit forwards. Take that out. A little bit more forward. Take that out and then remove all the hover so we can drop. All right, we're almost down. We just have another kilometer to go. One thousand. All right, let me hold for a moment and get try to get lined up better. And then once this is like at that line, I need to take out my forward movement. 
quite a bit more translation in that direction. Start taking out some of the forward a little bit more. All right, and let's drop. And I'm going to set my drop hold. Take out a bit more forward. A bit more translation. Okay, let's hold. All right, we're almost down. And I'm going to set my drop speed to about two or thereabout. So we just have 600 more kilometers to go. Landing gear is up, so let me put it down. And let me turn this off and get rid of this for now. Just a bit more on the hold. And turn it off and drop. Fifty Hold. meters. Twenty. Ten. Five. Four. Two. One. One hundred. And let's zoom out. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Okay, I almost didn't notice there in the last moment that my hold was at negative four, because usually I, I put that at like negative two. That was close to messing up. Uh, luckily, I noticed the hold there at the last moment, because you, you have to drop at a maximum of three meters per second. So that was pretty close. Okay, so that's it. So on this particular flight, I got 78.6. So I didn't do as well as I did last time, but it was pretty close. So now let me, I'm not going to continue, but now what I want to do, okay, we're a bit over 20 minutes, but let me just exit out of orbiter really quick and exit out of the launch panel. And I just want to show you how you can um, import that, uh, that flight into your lunar lander script. So if you go into your orbiter directory, go into script, go into lunar lander, there's a file in there called the ll.txt. You're just going to open that up. And I'm going to put this information down in the description or maybe link to this file. And all you have to do is copy this, paste it into yours. Uh, make sure that you're not, make sure Orbiter's not running, obviously. Make sure the launch pad's not running. And just copy, paste that information into your ll.txt. And then when your ll.txt comes up, you will have the same information I have here, so it will perform the same flight. All you have to do is do re retry flight. And as you can see, all this is in plain text, so again, you can cheat, but we're on the honor system here. So this is your percentage. Uh, this is my best percentage on that flight, was 79.33%, and the one that I just did was 786 And then I believe this is either the starting, I'm sure this is probably the starting location, this is the target location, and then this is this is the distance. So again, all this is in plain text, so it's really easy just to edit the file and, and cheat. You know, I can type in here, you know, 1.0, and it's going to say, hey, you did 100%. Um, but again, you know, we're not going to do that. So yeah, I'll put this information in the description down below or link directly to the file. And uh, yeah, I'd like for any of you that have Orbiter installed uh, that are interested in this, Go ahead and replay the same scenario that I just did. Play it as many times as you like. Get the absolute best score that you can. And post your results in the comments down below. And if you can record a video of it, even better. Post that video link in the comments down below. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. I will see you in the next video.